Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless all right i gotta show you this some of the most beautiful women in the world are from the netherlands so it only makes sense that miss netherlands 2023 was awarded to a biological man Trans woman Ricky Valerie Colley is the first male to win the female title in 94 years. I think, Caleb, that's because it didn't occur to anyone until about three minutes ago to award the best-looking female to a biological man. Uh, Ricky will now go on to compete in Miss Universe. Deuteronomy 22.5 A woman shall not wear anything that pertains to a man, nor shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all who do so are an abomination to the Lord your God. We started off with the Boycott Target song. Um, it's not my usual style of music, especially now since I'm doing gospel music. But when I saw that, you know, there was a Target collaborating with a Satanist to make children's clothing, it really hurt me. Dating with a Satanist, we don't know this is the end. God is coming for revenge. Target is Target and they I if I go back into this lane, because I was making a lot of music speaking out very hardcore, and then I was like, you know, I have to focus on God now. This is what he's calling me to do is, you know, just make music that glorifies him. You know, it really hurt me. And I was like, you know, this is a spiritual war still. This still counts. And I guess it is still for the kingdom of God. It's written in the first book of Genesis. And in the middle of June, we made basically like musical history, getting number one with a song about God's promise. And, you know, they try to flip it and say that we're hating on people. And like, if you know me, I love everybody. I've never treated anybody different. You know, I have friends that have all different types of views. And, you know, I give them the biggest hugs. Like, the, they're my close friends. We never let our disagreements affect us. However, I don't ignore the truth and love also means the truth. And, and the truth about the rainbow is in Genesis 9, 13, when God set the bow in the clouds to remind us that he's never going to flood the earth again. You know, it's really history. It's God prevailing through that darkness. And, and I think it's just so amazing. What is the true meaning of the rainbow? Biblically speaking, the rainbow is a covenant that God made with the whole earth, that he would never destroy the earth again with a flood. God made this covenant with the rainbow as the token. After the waters of the flood receded, and Noah and his family exited the ark, as we read in Genesis 9, 11-15, Thus I established my covenant with you. Never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood. Never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the sign of the covenant which I make between me and you, and every living creature that is with you, for perpetual generations. I set my rainbow in the cloud, and it shall be for the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. It shall be, when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the rainbow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant which is between me and you, and every living creature of all flesh. The water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. God made this promise, signified by the rainbow, not only to mankind, but to every living creature. The covenant is forever, never again, will there be a worldwide flood. This is the reason for the rainbow. It is not a symbol of diversity. It is a sign of God's covenant with man. It is a reminder to God and to man that he promised to never destroy the earth with a flood again. This is the truth found in God's word. But God's sign of his everlasting covenant with man has been hijacked by Satan. Today, when people see the rainbow, they think of diversity and gay rights. 
not God's promise. There is no reason this incredible sign from the Lord should be used to symbolize something diametrically in opposition to God's word. We need to get God's word out. People need to know what the rainbow stands for. More importantly, people need to know the promises of God. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Jesus, speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24, 12. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. New details now on a terrifying and deadly shooting rampage in New York City. A gunman on a scooter randomly opened fire in several neighborhoods, killing an 86-year-old man and injuring at least three others. Authorities say they recovered a 9mm handgun with an extended clip. Tonight, chilling new surveillance video showing the moment a suspect riding what police described as an illegal scooter went on a shooting rampage in broad daylight Saturday morning in Brooklyn and Queens, New York. The suspect seen riding the scooter makes a U-turn, fires on one man and misses, shattering a storefront window before firing again and hitting an 86-year-old man who later died. Witnesses sent scrambling for cover. I don't know, man. I just saw the gun and ducked. For nearly a half an hour, police say 25-year-old Thomas Abreu randomly fired a 9mm handgun with an extended magazine at pedestrians, injuring four additional people. We don't know the, mo the motive. It seems that his acts were random. Video shows that he's not targeting anybody. He's randomly shooting people. The Queen shooting reminiscent of the deadly random shooting in Philadelphia on July 3rd that killed five people and more gun violence in Cleveland, Ohio. We just heard shots over here on West 25th. Police say they're looking for the gunman who aimlessly opened fire on a group of people in the city's downtown overnight, wounding nine of them. Police still searching for motive. We're not sure what happened. Right now we have no indication that there is anything taking place before this individual started shooting. The Apostle Paul in his epistle to Timothy tells us in the last days society will be in a total immoral meltdown. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5 But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. The iconic San Francisco Park, famously seen in the opening credits of Full House, now the scene of a brazen crime. Shocking video shows a thief breaking into cars in broad daylight, leaving behind shattered car windows as eyewitnesses watch in disbelief and fear. All of us around, I could see people across everywhere, and we, we, I didn't do anything because I'm the kind that would go and do something. But at that point, I don't know if they have a gun. The victims, tourists visiting on vacation over the 4th of July, stopping for just a few minutes to snap a quick photo from Alamo Square. They don't understand the impact. Like, my child seat is on the side of the, of the car they broke the window, and now my son is going to sit there and we have to worry about getting cleaning out every single little bit of glass. Two families left with stolen belongings, including a laptop, and both dealing with damaged rental cars. Just get 
valuable things that they see as valuable. They left our Starbucks bag, they left the wheelchair at least, but everything else they took. The smash and grabs, the latest in a series of crimes plaguing the city. Robberies in San Francisco up almost 12% since last year, according to the police crime dashboard. In Noe Valley, considered a family-friendly neighborhood dubbed Stroller Valley. <laughs> woman screams captured by home surveillance camera after she told NBC Bay Area she was attacked on her way to pick up her child from daycare last month. The victim asking that her identity be concealed. Somebody came at me from behind uh, and grabbed for my phone and I instinctively grabbed back which I don't recommend um, and he pushed me over forcefully to the ground. Video showing a hooded person running from the scene to a waiting car. Massive fear to does this guy have a weapon? Am I about to get seriously injured? Other women coming forward with similar stories. A San Francisco police captain saying at least 11 cases are under investigation and a group of juveniles are believed to be responsible, according to the local district supervisor's office. Residents believe the thieves are targeting moms and caretakers walking around the neighborhood, now anxious for police to make arrests. One of the many signs that we are living in the end times is the epidemic of wickedness and violence that is sweeping the world today. Jesus tells us when society parallels the days of Noah, he will return as we read in Matthew 24, 37 through 39. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So what was going on in Noah's day that parallels our day? To find out the answer, we need to go back to the book of Genesis 6, 5 through 13. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God, and Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. There is no doubt about the hour in which we live being the season for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ as we link Matthew 24, verses 12 and 37 through 39 with 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. The Bible describes our day very clearly from these scriptures. The condition of wickedness and violence that caused the earth to be destroyed in Noah's day is the same condition our earth is in today. We want to get right to that breaking news, a type of weather event they say happens only once every thousand years, close to 10 inches of rain, a summer's worth, essentially falling in some areas in just hours. The result, flash flooding that turned dangerous and deadly, with a woman being swept away trying to reach higher ground. There have been dozens of rescues, many of them in New York, while in Vermont, almost that entire state under a flood warning tonight. 9 million at risk for flash flooding, which has destroyed dozens of roads and wiped out tracks on a busy commuter railroad servicing New York City. And it's not just here in the Northeast, much of the South and the Southwest still dealing with a brutal heat wave. We begin with Emily Aketa in hard hit New York. Emily, so many there caught off guard with this flooding. Tom, absolutely. Officials called the flooding here a once in 1,000 year event with enough force to even dislodge guardrails, as you can see behind me. And the unrelenting rain isn't over yet for those north of us. Tonight, a brutal bout of storms inches north, washing out roads and kicking Swiftwater rescue teams into high gear. States of emergency declared in parts of New York, Connecticut, and Vermont. I'm Kristen Dogger here in Vermont where the rain just isn't letting up. Some towns have already seen over seven and a half inches. Flash flooding has cut off entire communities. Dozens of roads are closed and now some rivers are approaching major flood stage. Almost the entire state still on high alert as we head into the overnight hours. Watch as floodwaters pour over this dam. The governor there comparing the relentless rain to Tropical Storm Irene in 2011. This is an all hands on deck response. 
We are closely coordinating with federal partners. The dangerous downpour comes as residents in New York's Hudson Valley today are digging out. Everything's destroyed. A summer's worth of rain falling in just a day, collapsing roadways and stranding cars in dangerous flash flooding. I've been here 16 years. I've never seen flooding like this at all. Back up there with New York State troopers used ropes Sunday to rescue drivers. And authorities had to save 700 passengers stuck aboard Amtrak in Putnam County. They're calling this a 1,000 year event. Authorities say 43 year old Pamela Nugent died while trying to evacuate her home that had been overtaken by water. It looked like a raging ocean with a hurricane. Nearby, Savannah Pitcher waded through treacherous floodwaters to reach her grandmother and help guide her to higher ground. If you had not gotten to your grandmother, what do you think would have happened? I don't think everybody would be okay. Honestly. I just watched my car just swim away. Tonight in Pennsylvania, residents are facing the aftermath of Reading's wettest day in three years. While back in Vermont, first responders are bracing for a potentially long night. It was a terrifying weekend for some homeowners in Southern California. Several homes were destroyed and others tagged as unstable after the ground in a gated community severely shifted, sending homes down a hillside. CBS's Elise Preston is there tonight and reports the situation is only getting worse. You can actually hear the snap, crackle, and pop of these homes as they shift and move and break. It happened so quickly to a dozen houses in the idyllic seaside community of Rolling Hills Estates. Million dollar homes with views to match. I'm still trying to recover from the shock. Weber Yen had just 20 minutes to flee his home of 13 years. How would you describe what you see right now? I can't describe it. What used to be a second floor is now the first floor. I feel very sad. I feel very sad and a big loss. Los Angeles County Supervisor Janice Hahn met with homeowners and surveyed the damage. Three have actually already gone into the, the, the ravine below them, but they're all going to end up there. And not if, when. Yes. Geologists are now looking at whether Southern California's severe winter storms, which cause landslides, may have played a role in this massive collapse. To see your home, you know, tumble and crash into a canyon that you've always just peered at as sort of a serene area um, must be traumatic. Now, families in the neighborhood have come here to see the damage tonight. Many are worried they, too, may be forced to evacuate. So far, there's no indication if this landslide can be stopped. As the world sizzles with consecutive heat waves, temperature records are being broken fast. Last month was the hottest June ever recorded. But scientists are warning that it's only the beginning with the consequences of El Nino around the corner. So El Nino hasn't had as much of an effect as it's going to later in the year. So we're seeing these high temperatures in you know, the North Atlantic, etc. despite the fact that El Nino hasn't really got going yet. You know, we can expect much higher temperatures from the El Nino in you know, the latter half of the year in sort of October, November time. El Nino is a climate phenomenon that occurs when warm water builds up along the equator in the eastern Pacific. First observed in 17th century Peru, El Nino is cyclical and happens every two to seven years for 12 to 18 months. It leads to heavy rain in South America and California, or conversely, to little rainfall in Asia and Australia. This, in turn, can cause wildfires and droughts, as well as outbreaks of diseases such as cholera. It was particularly devastating in 2016, the warmest year ever recorded. But scientists warn that a return to El Nino conditions, on top of climate change, makes it almost certain that a new global temperature record will be set in the next five years. These plagues of extreme weather are more frequent and more intense just like Jesus said they would be just prior to his return. America claims to be a Christian nation, with 70% of the people claiming such. But in reality, the true number of Christians are far less. This nation has made a God of their own liking. A God who accepts abortion. A God who accepts homosexuality. A God who accepts fornication. If you're having sex, and you're not married, it's not called dating. It's called fornication. A God who accepts sexual immorality. This is not the true God of the Bible. This comes from the God of this world, who has been given power for a short time. 
aka Satan. The God of the Bible tells us he hates hands that shed innocent blood. Proverbs 6.17 He calls homosexuality an abomination. Leviticus 18.22 He tells us sex is between a man and a woman in marriage. Genesis 2.24 The God of the Bible tells us the sin of abortion, homosexuality, fornication, and all sexual immorality, if not forgiven and repented of, sends a person to hell, as we read in 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers, will inherit the kingdom of God. These are the words of the one and only true God, and he is showing us through powerful weather events that he is returning, and that America and the world are on notice. What we are witnessing is just a glimpse of what the seven-year tribulation will be like. These terrible judgments are pictured as seven seals opened, seven trumpets blown, and seven bowls poured out. The first four of the seven seals are known as the four horsemen of the apocalypse. The book of Revelation tells us when Jesus breaks the first seal and the white horse rides, the Antichrist will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the second seal and the red horse rides, war will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the third seal and the black horse rides, famine will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the fourth seal and the pale horse rides, death and Hades will be unleashed. The Bible tells us 25% of the population of the earth will be killed at this time, as we read in Revelation 6-8. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was death, and Hades followed with him, and power was given to them over a fourth of the earth, to kill with the sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. The population of the world is roughly 8 billion meaning 2 billion people will die during this time. The remaining 17 judgments of God include devastating earthquakes, cosmic disturbances, scorching heat, meteors, 100-pound hailstones, volcanic eruptions, loathsome sores on those who take the mark of the beast, the seas, rivers, and springs of water turn to blood, demons torturing mankind, and a 200 million strong demonic army who will kill another third of mankind, bringing the total to 4 billion. Psalm 18.7 Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of the hills also quaked and were shaken, because he was angry. A volcano in Iceland has begun erupting again. It's been 11 months since its last eruption ended. It comes after heightened seismic activity in the region. Experts say there have been at least 7,000 earthquakes recorded. So far, the volcano has erupted twice in the last two years without causing damage or disruptions to the area, including flights, since it's near Iceland's international air traffic hub. The president of Iceland tweeted, No threat to infrastructure yet, but civil defense has closed off a large danger zone for the time being due to volcanic gases. Meanwhile, we monitor the spectacle from a safe distance in awe of Mother Nature. So many people have gotten up close to look at the lava. Tourists, some even with their dogs. This person took photographs of the lava flow. As dramatic as it looks, this isn't the only one in Iceland. Far from it. The North Atlantic island nation boasts about 130 volcanoes. It appears changes to our planet are now accelerating. The number of earthquakes around the globe continues to rise, and volcanoes are beginning to behave in some unusual ways. We are far more vulnerable to natural disasters than most people realize, and it looks like the shaking of our planet is only going to intensify in the months and years ahead. We were warned by the prophets of old, and even Jesus himself, that these things would take place right before his return. This is the moment the Ubinas volcano erupts, spewing plumes of smoke and rock into the air. The Ubinas is Peru's most active volcano. It had been dormant since 2019. Now ash has blanketed communities more than 20 kilometers away and authorities are on alert. The volcano became active again last May. Scientists say the Ubinas is causing more than 150 earthquakes a day, but they are still short of calling for an immediate evacuation. We have to see an increase in the seismic activity and register anomalies in the temperature at the crater. We're evaluating. The smoke must reach an average two kilometers high and the intervals of the earthquakes are closer. Soldiers have been deployed to help the population, but local authorities say shelters are unprepared. They don't have running water or sewage. With warnings, volcanic activity is likely to increase. 
Time to fully prepare may be running out. The seven-year tribulation is fast approaching this world and the news headlines prove it. God in His grace and mercy is trying to shake the world out of its complacency. We are currently living in a time Jesus refers to as the birth pains. Jesus is likening last day's events to a woman in labor. The closer we get to Jesus' second coming, last day signs and calamities will become more frequent and more intense. Following the rapture of all true Christians to heaven, the Bible warns us that the wrath of God will be poured out on an unrepentant world. One of the judgments described in the book of Revelation seems to include a massive volcanic eruption, as we read in Revelation 8.8. Then the second angel sounded, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear, that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world, as we know it, is near. For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned, and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised Him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with Him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, Repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.